we were so close as a family. What our whole life was based on was our family. And to lose an integral part of it was absolutely devastating. On August 18, 1992, tragedy struck the Moore family, taking the life of their 15-year-old daughter, Tara, in an automobile accident near their home in Laguna Hills, California. But the Moors say this tragic event was foretold by a series of angelic messages. Two or three months prior to the accident, I said, our life's going to change. I mean, I, I didn't know what I meant by that. I, just, I said, I feel there's some change in the air. Sandy and Kirk Moore noticed a change in their daughter weeks before the accident. Tara had become passionate about angels. She purchased an angel book, and it was her Bible. She carried it with her. We have the copy all dog-eared and tattered with notes to her angels. We found in her notebooks from school, she would ask questions of her angels. I mean, here we find math problems, and on the next page, you know, angels, what do you think I should do about this? Angels, help me with this. An angelic force seemed to be guiding Tara in a new direction. We noticed some things that occurred that were very, very prevalent during the two weeks preceding the accident. There was a teen camp that uh, Sandy went to with both uh, Tara and her younger sister, Deanna. At camp, Tara had painted two little ceramic angels for us, uh, one with a tear in its eye, which wasn't like Tara. And in fact, the kids at camp were calling her the angel girl. Angelic messages continued to pour into the Moore home. When Tara returned from camp, she gave her sister Deanna her beloved angel book. I remember the, the joy in Deanna's eyes when she told me that. She said, Mom, Tara gave me her favorite book and told me she'll always be my guardian angel. I know that she believed in angels a lot. And, you know, I, I was her little sister, so of course I wanted to believe in angels too. At the time, Tara's family said they were unaware that the presence of angels were clues to Tara's destiny, which would become apparent two days later. She'd made burritos for girlfriends, and Deanna and her friends were there. It was kind of a girls' evening. And she looked at me with all the girls at the table and said, Mom, when you're finished with your work on this plane of existence, can you go at any time to do your work on a higher plane? And I remember that she locked into my gaze at that time for a few seconds longer than normal. And then we went on laughing and having a good time. And that was her way of saying, it's my time. I have something more important to do. Later that night, Tara ran an errand with two friends telling her mother that she'd be home soon. And when Kirk came home that night, he walked in the door and he said, I'm sorry I'm late. There was a very bad accident on our, down from our house. And that's when I knew instantly what had happened. There was no question. I, I said, Kirk, it's Tara, and we have to go. The van Tara's friend was driving accidentally hit a truck parked on their dimly lit street. Her two friends survived the accident. Tara did not. I just remember thinking of everything that we ever said we were going to do in the future, just <laughs> kind of going away, <laughs> living in houses next to each other, and, and she was going to adopt me with her boyfriend and take me in as her little, little child, <laughs> just like, crazy things. The Moors were devastated by Tara's death, but the following morning, they discovered even more angelic clues, clues that made them wonder if Tara might have known her fate. The morning after the accident, um, we found on her bedroom floor a song sheet entitled, From an Angel. And in our kitchen the next morning, there was an angel-shaped cookie on our counter. I mean... One angel cookie yeah. Tara had made. Just I don't know <laughs> where she got the dough. I don't know. 
Yeah. Where we got the cookie and, cutter and, or any mm -hmm. of it. We knew that those were her little ways of saying, I love you and I, I have gone to do other things and be with the angels. The Moors will forever remember Tara as the little girl who was always 10 feet off the ground, who sang and danced and filled their lives with joy. And now, through their agony and sorrow, they have received the gift of comfort from Tara's angels. One of the greatest gifts in my life was the relationship that Tara and I had. She was nervous, upset, or whatever. And I would always say, Tara, I'll walk you through this. It was one of our expressions. Since her death, the Moors believe that Tara has become the family's guardian angel. Tara's grandmother remembers one evening when Tara appeared before her in a time of need. This particular weekend, Sandy, Deanna, and Kirk had gone to Arrowhead. They got to be two hours after they should have been home, and I was getting kind of hysterical. And I look up, there's Tara in a little outfit that she had and knew I liked. And she said, I just came to walk you through this. They will be home. And then there was a little swish, and she was gone. Now, through Tara's death, angels have altered the course of the Moors' lives forever. We were so touched by all the angel signs Tara had left us that that really became our focus. People started giving us angel gifts and books, and angels started filling our lives. The Moors took the presence of angels in their lives as a sign. Both Sandy and Kirk quit their successful careers, and putting their faith in angels, they opened a business in honor of their daughter called Tara's Angels, a gift store located in San Juan Capistrano filled with every type of angel gift one could imagine. We wanted to keep Tara's love and memory alive somehow. Um, to go through a tragic death, seems so senseless unless you can turn it around and create a positive out of it so in creating the store that's what we feel that we've done we're reaching out to people they come in they tell us they feel good being in there people come from all over the country not only to purchase an angel book or figurine but also to experience the spiritual healing they say the store provides A man had come in and he'd lost his wife and he said I just need to get something special for my grandchildren and so we talked and touched again so that's how in in our day how the story and the healing and, and the angels help heal people's lives we don't feel we've lost her I know Tara and her angels have such a large significance in our life now and the life of many other people too. It was time for her to, to um, go to a different existence in a higher place. Tara's ashes were spread out at sea and it's close to a place that I go surfing a lot and I go there and I, I do, I feel really connected and I totally know that there's angels out there surfing with me. <laughs> you know, my board's long enough to fit an angel. <laughs>